Good morning, people of God. My name is Pastor Emily Rova Hegener, and I am happy to be with all of you at Emmanuel on this second Sunday after Epiphany and filling in for Pastor Cindy while she is away on vacation. Just a couple of announcements about your life together. Um, I need to point out that the annual meeting is coming up in two weeks from today on January 31st at 11 a.m. That will be on Zoom and you will need to pre-register for that. Also next Sunday is Global Mission Sunday. So there will be a second offering taken that will go towards that ministry. So as we begin, in worship this morning, I invite you to pause and take a few deep breaths as we prepare our hearts and minds. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God whose voice is upon the waters whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly 
day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The temple of the God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he said to Eli, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel, got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On the day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell his vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am, Eli said, what was that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out. O oh Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before mm. and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all in my lifespan would need to be like yours. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, 
the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip, Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Come and see. These are words that yearn for connection, words that hold an invitation, words that need each other in order to bring to light what is possible. The story from the Gospel of John is simple and gives us these three words that become a life changer for not simply one disciple, but many, many more. It is the call story of those who encounter and are called to follow Jesus. In John's gospel, the call initially comes to Andrew and Peter, but the following day, Jesus tells Philip to follow him. I have to admit, I was thinking, really? Philip just drops everything and follows Jesus? But he does, and it changes his life. The plot thickens because Philip then goes out and finds Nathaniel. I love that we don't hear anything else other than he just finds him. These men are real people, just living their lives, doing what they do. Though in today's scripture, we find them along the Jordan River. Their daily work more than likely was as fishermen, as archeologists have found fish hooks in the floors of the houses excavated in the town of Bethsaida. So this life of fishing entailed long hours, putting their boats in early in the morning along with the nets, pulling the nets up, hoping for fish and bringing home whatever was in the nets or not. My guess is life was pretty predictable and pretty routine. There was a rhythm and a flow and a sense of knowing how day and night would usually unfold. But on this day, Nathaniel's life was about to change forever. And it was all because of an invitation to come and see. Being found by Philip, Little did Nathaniel know that he would also be found by the one he would go and see. I can imagine Nathaniel's comment of, can anything good come out of Nazareth, was said out of maybe annoyance or in response to hopes that had been dashed before. Nathaniel doubted Philip has actually found Jesus, the Messiah. And maybe the conversation in his head would sound a little something like, really, Philip, don't mess with me. Don't do this. Let me go back to what I know. But Philip's three words were like the fish hook that grabbed hold and wouldn't let go of Nathaniel. 
It's kind of like the persistent child who continually says to their mom or dad or grandparent or anyone who is standing around them, come here, come and see, come and look what I've found, come and see what I've made, come and see what I've done, come and see, please come. Nathaniel's encounter with Jesus was perhaps a total surprise or a complete shock when Jesus identified him. His identity made known in Jesus is what seals the deal for him. Isn't that what we all want to be, to be known? And from that point on, Nathaniel was hooked all because of those three words, come and see. We are all here because someone in our lives said, come and see. Someone felt that it was important. Someone knew that life with Jesus was different and full of blessing. Someone wanted us to have what they experienced in their own lives and didn't want us to be without. Maybe your invitation to come and see Jesus happened long ago, perhaps at your baptism or through your parents or grandparents, or maybe more recently through a friend or a neighbor. The invitation to come and see is not a one-time done deal invitation, but a lifelong invitation that arrives again and again and again. Because you see, we get lost, we wander off, we go to the farthest limits of the earth and we need to be reminded that Jesus is there always, standing and watching and waiting and knowing us no matter where we go or what we do. For instance, I listened to Pastor Cindy's words from last week as we celebrated the baptism of Jesus. The celebration reminded me of the numerous times I've met with parents who want to get their baby done, meaning they want their baby baptized so they can check it off the list of to-dos. But what the parents themselves have forgotten or don't realize is that once the actual baptism is over, it's not, okay, now we've done that so we can move on with our lives. But you see, baptism is a game changer because it is an encounter with the one who names and claims us. It is one of those come and see moments when we are identified as God's own. You are a child of God marked with the cross of Christ forever. Remember, child of God, you are washed in the waters. Child of God, you are going to make mistakes and get lost and be found and get lost again and be found by the one who loves you more than you could ever imagine. To encounter Jesus is like being invited to a party where the host has been expecting you. And when you walk in the door, is thrilled that you finally arrived. In our own arrival to Jesus, we discover our identity and the core of who we are as God's children. That's simply it. That's simply who we are, beloved children of God. We are invited to continue to walk on the journey of faith every single day. And there is freedom in that. Lots of freedom to walk in grace with God and each other. As called disciples, our identity as children of God continues to claim us. As children of God, we are called to extend the invitation to come and see to our neighbors in the world. In other words, our faith in Jesus beckons us to reach out like Philip and find those like Nathaniel who doubt, wonder, and question. Jesus beckons us to reach out to the ones who are broken, the ones who can't hold it all together, the ones who are angry, the ones who are sad, and the ones who are lost. And oh, there are so many who are lost. Actually, in these days, we might all feel a little bit lost 
and yearn to be found again. I am currently on leave from a pastoral call, but have returned to teaching, which is my undergraduate degree. When I started the job as a literacy intervention teacher about six weeks ago, I met another teacher on my literacy teacher team. I'll call her Kathy. On my first day, I walked into the school and I assumed that Kathy would help me figure out what I was doing since I had never been in the school and I didn't know where the copier was or the bathroom or I had honestly no idea where I was about to begin. And it was the week before we fully went to distant learning. So it was a time of transition. I simply asked Kathy questions and every time I did, she glared at me. I could tell she was angry. And from there on out, I dreaded going to her because it was like stepping on pins and needles when I needed clarification on anything. But she was the only person available, so I had to go to her. At the end of the first day, she came into my room and leaned against the door frame and said, do you need anything else? I replied, no, I'm good, thank you. I'm sorry I asked so many questions today. I know you are really stressed out and things are incredibly difficult between COVID and everything else going on. And at that moment, I could see the tears welling up in her eyes. She swallowed, sucked in her breath, rolled her eyes and walked away. There it was, the crack of brokenness. Many people are holding on to whatever they can to make sense and meaning with where we are as individuals, communities, churches, states, nations, and a world. But nothing makes sense and we stand back and ask, can anything good come out of this at all? The good news for us this morning is that in the mess of everything going on, in the darkness and in the muck of it all, the invitation to come and see is always there. The one named Jesus claims us and loves us and includes us no matter what. That is the good. That is the gospel. That is the light, and that is what will bring us through these dark days. Come and see is not only our invitation to Jesus, but our invitation to the world, so that all might know the one who loves us more than life itself and reminds us that we are never, ever alone. Amen.
guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. As we pray together, please respond to each of the petitions with, have mercy, O God. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, for Emmanuel Lutheran Church and for our partner congregations, Mikambizi and Magabike Lutheran Churches of Tanzania, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Guatemala, and the Living Gospel Believers Church in St. Paul, and for all servants of the gospel that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. For the well-being of the God. For plants and animals, for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, we pray especially for Paul, Karen, Sandy, Rachel, Russ, David, Tom, Brielle, Carmen, John, Sarah, Natalie, Craig, Nathan, Ricky, Andrea, Mike, Jeff and his family, Samantha and her unborn baby, and all the others that we hold in our hearts, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our country, for those who are struggling with the uncertainty and conflict, for Governor Waltz and all of our elected leaders and their families, that they be protected and guided in their work by the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have, have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, light of the universe, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O God. We worship you, O God. By your spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer together with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. And the music was amazing. So thanks to everybody who participated um, in the music this morning.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.